What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? I'm Chana D, the Techno Dad, and in this video I'll be checking out an AV receiver by Anthem called the MRX720. And we're gonna get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now if you're new to the channel, my name is Chana and I'm crazy about my home theater. And I've been this way since the mid 90s. I really love all these new audio formats. So if you want to learn about Dolby Atmos, DTSX and Oro 3D, you've come to the right place and you should consider subscribing. All right, everyone. So today we're checking out the Anthem MRX 720. And before we begin, I'd like to thank Anthem for sending this AVR over for review. So thank you guys so much. Now, before we get into the unboxing, let's check out some stats of the MRX 720. This is Anthem's least expensive Dolby Atmos AVR, which comes in at $24.99. No, definitely not cheap. It does process 11 channels, but only powers seven. So out of the box, it can support a 5.2.2 Atmos and DTSX setup. I have a 5.1.4 setup, so I'll be using the Parasound A52 Plus to help power my nine channel system. Why does it cost so much? Well, I've heard some tall tales about Anthem Room Correction, or ARC for short, which is their proprietary room correction software. So I'm really excited to get this in my living room and see what's up. Now the MRX is rated at 140 watts per channel into eight ohms with two channels driven. I will be powering the front stage and the rear height channels with the Parasound A52 Plus. So the MRX 720 will be powering four channels, the surrounds and the front heights. All right. Enough talking, let's go upstairs and check it out. Oh yeah. First we're greeted with a little bag of goodies. And in this goodie bag, we have a nice looking remote, a pair of AAA batteries for the remote, a pair of wireless antennas, an FM antenna, and one of the best looking instruction manuals I've seen in a long time. This thing's actually in color. There's also a smaller box containing the calibration mic and mic stand. When we get the MRX out of the packaging, we come across a two prong IEC power cable. All right, let's check out the front panel. On the left, we have navigation buttons to go through menus in case you don't have your remote handy. Below that, we have a flip down panel that reveals a one and quarter inch headphone jack, HDMI input, and a USB port for software updates. In the center, we have a large LED display with six selection buttons underneath. Moving over to the right, we have the volume knob and two power buttons, one for the main zone and one for zone two. That's it for the front. Let's turn around, check out the back. Let's start on the left with two antennas, the wireless antenna and the FM antenna. Below that, we have a ground screw for attaching a turntable. At the bottom, we have the 11.2 pre-out section. Above the pre-out section, we have the analog audio inputs and outputs. To the right, we have the digital audio inputs and outputs, optical and coaxial inputs with one optical output. To the right, we have IR input, trigger output, and an RS-232 interface. At the top, we have seven HDMI inputs and two HDMI outputs. And at the very bottom, we have seven speaker terminals and the two on the far right are assignable between zone two, surround back, and height one. Moving on to the right, we have a network section consisting of an ethernet port, a USB port, and a Wi-Fi setup button. Rounding out the back panel, we have the second wireless antenna and the power port at the bottom.
One thing I do want to take note of is the chassis of this AVR. It's got this textured enclosure, which is a really nice touch. Good job, Anthem. All right, now let's unbox the mic and the mic stand. First, we see a card with a web address to download the Anthem Room Correction software. Next, we have a long Ethernet cable, a long USB cable, the Anthem calibration microphone, and the mic stand itself. No cardboard here, ladies and gentlemen. One thing that was kind of annoying was having to set up my gaming PC on the dining table to run the Anthem Room Correction. But hey, you know, just had to do it. So I downloaded the software and connected up the mic to the computer and the computer and the MRX to the network. You select the AVR on the network and mic to start the ARC setup. So for setting up a 5.1.2 configuration, we need to change back amp to height one Set height one to whatever your system height channel looks like. I'll choose middle in ceiling for this demo. For height two, we set that to off. And then we want to uncheck backs, as in surround backs, and also uncheck heights two. We have the option to measure a maximum of 10 positions and a minimum of five. Clicking OK gets the calibration started. Now I'm just gonna speed this up for our purposes. Once it's done taking all the measurements, it processes and then we need to select the AVR again to upload the settings. We get a message saying the upload is complete and we get a report of the calibration. You can either print this or save it as a PDF. I saved it as a PDF and left a link down in the description for you guys to download and check it out if you're interested. As you can see in the graphs, the red line is the uncorrected room response, purple is uncorrected with base management, black is the target line, and green is the corrected room response with base management. If you compare the green, purple, and black lines, you'll notice that the green corrected line is very close to the black line on the graphs. There are some variances on the low and high end for some of the speakers, but overall, this is pretty close to ideal. Let's go back and set up this AVR for a 5.1.4 speaker configuration like I have. So again, we select the AVR on the network and select the mic like before. For back amp, we're gonna set this to height one. For height one, I'm gonna select front on wall and for height two, I'm gonna select back on wall. And we need to uncheck backs. Then we click OK and run through calibration like last time. Okay, now that all that's done, I bet the big question on your mind is, how does ARC sound? And is it worth the cost? And the short answer is a big fat yes. So I went through a few choice scenes for movies that have both an Atmos track and a 5.1 audio track, you Dolby True HD and, and DTS Master Audio, of course. I also went through the Dolby Atmos demo disc and played a few of my favorite demos. And what I heard was actually amazing. I've never heard any system sound so good in my living room. To me, it sounds like every mix was super transparent and each channel seemed to have more presence, meaning that vocals were clearer than I'm used to and foreground sounds and music were separate from the vocals, but at the same time, like meshed together. I don't know how they did that. That was really cool. Now the surrounds had more going on and it felt like there was more audio information there for some reason. Now my wife and I started watching a movie on the Vudu app through the Xbox One X Friday night and we finished it on Saturday night after I had switched to the MRX 720 from the Denon X4400H. And I noticed the same thing in this movie too that you know the mix was super transparent, very clear and each channel was more alive. I gotta say, everything I heard about this Anthem room correction is true. It really is leagues above other room correction on the market. Now I haven't experienced DRAC or DRAC, I'm not sure how you say it, but I have experienced Odyssey, YPOW, and AccuEQ. And for me, hands down, Anthem room correction makes my home theater really shine. 
Now I am in a living room, so it's not the best situation. So I can only imagine how this would be like in a dedicated theater room. I'm super stoked about the Anthem MRX 720 and Anthem's room correction, the ARC. If you guys have any questions for me, um, ask them in the comments below or hit me up on whichever social media you like to use the most. I will be making a full review of this AVR in the next few months and I'm really excited to demo different speakers with the MRX 720. Again, a big shout out and thank you to Anthem for sending this AVR over for review. Thanks again. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I am the Techno Dad, and I'll see you next time.